Chapter 1. Lacey. Where in the hell is that girl anyway? Gwen Lindstrom asked Mac as she flipped over the sign in the restaurant window from closed to open. The dark sky had just begun to light, but at the early hour, dawn had not yet brightened the shallow valley where Du Bois, Wyoming lay. Mac shrugged. Second time this week she's been late, right? He asked Gwen through the opening cut in the wall between the restaurant's dining area and the kitchen. He was cleaning the already spotless grill, getting it ready for the breakfast crowd, soon to wander in for crisp bacon, over-easy eggs, and tender pancakes. I still think you need to drug test her. Or you could just fire her for being late. You've done that for lesser things. I would, but the summer tourist season's just started, and waitress pickings are thin, Gwen explained, reaching into the fridge for squeeze bottles of the hot homemade salsa the cafe was famous for. The girl they talked about was Lacey Stevens, but she wasn't really a girl since she was in her 20s. She had wandered in a month earlier looking for work. Gwen had taken pity on Lacey. She was a skinny little thing, shorter than Gwen's five foot five, and looked like it had been a long time since she'd had a decent meal. Still, her appearance was clean and neat, and her long, dark hair was pulled back into a tidy ponytail. And Gwen was shorthanded with Michelle on maternity leave and most likely not coming back. Gwen had told Lacey, I have a spot open on the morning shift. We open at 6 a.m. That means you need to be here and ready to go before 5.45. Understand? Lacey nodded her agreement. Gwen went on. Your hair is good pulled back like that, and I guess the purple is okay. It looked like the bottom half of the girl's dark hair had been dipped into purple dye. On Lacey, the look worked. Plus, did she have the standing to protest hair? Gwen fingered her earlobe with its row of earrings that ran from the top of her ear to the bottom of the lobe. She wouldn't begrudge the girl that purple. But, Gwen continued, you'll need to cover that. She pointed to the tattooed sleeve on Lacey's left arm that ran from just above her wrist up to where it disappeared under her pushed-up sleeve of her baggy sweater. I have a long sleeve shirt I can wear, Lacey told her. And at that, Gwen hired her. For three weeks, Lacey had arrived before the designated time and ready to work. No doubt she was a hard worker, although her nervous manner and the fact that she was always fretting, moving, and fidgeting was quite a contrast from Michelle's heavy-bellied, cautious ways. And Lord, how easily the girl was distracted. A truck would rumble into the lot, and Lacey, in the middle of taking a customer's order, would stare out the window until the driver shut off the motor. Just then, the door opened and Lacey rushed in. Sorry, sorry, she told Gwen as she zoomed past her on her way to the back room for an apron. Before Gwen could open her mouth to say anything, Lacey was gone, the door to the back room swinging in her wake. Mac held up two fingers, telling Gwen twice in one week. The first time Lacey was late, she'd come in with a black eye, the makeup she applied failing to hide the bruise. Gwen had reminded Lacey that she needed to get there before 5.45, but seeing the damage, she didn't have the heart to scold her. I'm so sorry. I know this is the second time, but I promise it won't happen again, Lacey told Gwen after she came back, tying the black apron with Rancher's Cafe stenciled in red above her breast. The bruise around Lacey's eyes had turned to that pukey shade of yellow-green that bruises do after a few days. What caught Gwen's attention this morning was the darkness smudged under both of Lacey's eyes. Not a bruise, but definitely evidence she hadn't slept much. Gwen wondered if she'd been partying late or was her boyfriend, who had most likely smacked her, also been responsible for the sleepless night. Their first customer pulled into the lot, headlights sweeping the inside of the restaurant. I'll talk to you later about it, Lacey. Right now, we have work to do. Gwen watched Lacey's shoulders relax with the reprieve as the second customer pulled into the lot. The restaurant's busy breakfast time fell between 6 and 9 a.m., Lacey was even more nervous and twitchy than usual as they waited on the ranch and farm workers who rose early for work first and then the office staff and salespeople who slipped in for a bite before their workday began. Every time someone drove into the parking lot or opened the squeaky glass door, Lacey's head jerked toward the noise, a strange expression on her face. Gwen couldn't decipher the look. Gwen wondered if it was fear, dread, or anticipation. An unsettling tingle fluttered on the back of Gwen's neck as if Lacey watched her all morning like a dog that had an accident on the carpet and new punishment loomed. At 10.30, with only one couple still eating and unable to stand it anymore, Gwen poured two cups of coffee and motioned Lacey to join her at an empty booth. You were late again this morning, Gwen told her as soon as Lacey sat. 
Why was that? She always believed the direct approach was best. Gwen didn't give them time to formulate a lie. Lacey's hand shook as she poured sugar into her coffee. She quickly set the sugar container back on the table and tucked her hands under her thighs. Gwen had grabbed a couple of silverware sets rolled in napkins before she sat down. Now she unrolled one of them, took out a spoon, and laid it on the napkin beside Lacey's mug. When she looked up from her task, Gwen saw a tear had formed in the corner of Lacey's bruised eye. 